Hello, I'm Mike Russell from MusicRadioCreative.com. It's finally here, version 2.1 of the Rodecaster Pro firmware, unlocking a whole heap of new features, including tweaking the audio processing. Let's take a look at that now. All right, I'm really excited. So I have done the update and it's uh, sparkly and new and now all the numbers on the microphone inputs light up. It's very nice, but there's more than that. You can tweak the audio processing. And by that, I mean you can go into detail and you can change everything from high pass filter to compressor to EQ on your voice. It's really, really cool. I think I've been asking Rode for this since they released the Rodecaster Pro. And finally, now anyone who wants to get into it with audio can do that. Of course, you've got the great presets. They've always been there and they always will be to make your voice sound better, but now if you really want to tweak everything, including the Aphex on board, you can do so. Rode were also cool enough to send through a few accessories that I'm going to be using today. Uh, so the XLR ID, well, it's a bunch of ID tags that are very colourful and they actually match the colours on your Rodecaster. So you can simply get a pink one and clip it to a microphone and that will be your pink microphone. And there's two of them, so you can put one on one end of the XLR and one on the other end of the XLR so you never get confused. Then I've got this. HJA4, which is really, really cool. In fact, it looks like something out of a James Bond movie. When you open it up and pull it out, it looks like uh, four pocket rockets there, uh, ready to do some serious destruction. But no, uh, they're simply a 3.5 millimeter to 6.35 millimeter jack converter. So perfect for my Marley headphones that I use on the treadmill. If I want that discreet look while I'm recording on the Rodecaster Pro, I simply clip one of these on put these headphones in and then pop them into the back of the Rodecaster Pro. So a nice little accessory there. There's also the SC9 cable. I'll be using this actually because it's fantastic. Instead of TRS, which are the uh, jacks with just two rings around the end, this jack actually has three rings around the end. And this is important as it not only allows you to record the output of your phone or tablet that you plug it into, but you can also send the audio back so that the guest who maybe you're speaking to on the phone can hear what you're saying. In my case, I'm gonna plug it into the back and I'm also gonna plug it into this tablet over here so I can use iJingle Pro. It's a really cool jingle app. So not only have I got these eight effects pads, but I've actually got an iPad app as well to play more jingles on the phone fader here on the Rodecaster Pro. And finally, before we get stuck into audio processing, the DC USB one is amazing. This is another thing that Rode have done really well for us podcasters on the move. It is quite simply the possibility to plug your Rodecaster Pro in using a USB cable. Thank you, Rode. So now when I go out and about, I don't have to scramble around for adapters or find a PowerPoint. I can simply plug one end with the security lock into the back of the Rodecaster Pro, the other end into a USB uh, hub or whatever. Now this is very important when you're plugging it in. The USB port you plug it into needs to provide at least 2.4 amps, okay? Any less than that, and some of them do provide less than that, and you won't be able to power on the Rodecaster Pro. But a really cool accessory. Let's dive in. I'm really excited to play with firmware 2.1 on the Rodecaster Pro. The first thing I'm gonna do before I do anything else is go into the settings menu. I'm gonna go into advanced, I'm gonna go into audio, and I'm going to go to processing. And right at the bottom, effects edit mode, I'm going to enable that. Once that is enabled, I'm able to go into my microphone channel and edit every single effect. It's really cool. Let's hit record, open the microphone, and now I'm speaking to you on my microphone that's plugged into the Rodecaster Pro. It's not a fancy microphone, I just want to see the potential of the effects here. So let's hop into number one and let's hop into audio processing here. And look at this. Wow, this is amazing. High pass filter, noise gate, de compressor, and of course the Aphex effects that you can actually tweak. Really, really cool stuff. Let's start with the high pass filter. And this is a really simple thing. It cuts off the low end below a frequency you select. So usually this is used to reduce bass noise, rumble, anything like that that may be getting in the way of your recording, even some plosives as well. So by default, I see here it's at 60 hertz. I can take that down and I can include all the bass. Some people like all the bass. Um, but usually for a male voice, I'd set this around between 80 to 100 hertz and maybe for a female voice as far up as 120 hertz. No higher than that. Otherwise, you're going to sound like you're on the phone and it's just not going to be great. So for my voice, I'll keep it around about 100 hertz. I wish I could be OCD there and get to 100 but 101 will be fine. Back and on to the next effect. This is the noise gate. Wow, this is awesome. Uh, so the threshold, let's start with the threshold on the noise gate. This 
is the point at which your audio will be heard. So when your audio goes above the threshold level, you get heard, you get through the gate, and everything is there. But when your audio goes below, like when I go silent, the noise gate closes and you shouldn't be able to hear any background noise. So for this, if I keep pushing it up, it'll eventually cut off my speech like this. Keep going up. Oh, there we go. You hear the noise gate kicking in too much. And again, oh, yeah kicking in. So we need to set this at a good biting point. I'd say maybe around minus 40 dB here for me. And when I go quiet, I can actually hear that noise gate kicking in nicely. Uh, the attack we can reduce down if we want the noise gate to be a bit tighter and a bit faster when we go silent, which is nice. And the hold, if you find your words are getting cut off, particularly when you say f words, and I heard my f was getting cut off there, you can increase the hold a little bit, uh, and that will just help alleviate some of that. So fun, fun, this is fun. Yeah, that works nicely. Again, release, I would leave around the same. Range is perfectly fine. Uh, now, one thing I would love to see from Rode, maybe they'll do this in a future update. I know this is the first version of version 2.1 where you can edit the effects, but I'd like to see some kind of visual indicator on the noise gate. Uh, so maybe a green for open and a red for closed. And even if you want to go the Adobe Audition route, I'd like a yellow in the middle for hold. How about that? Would that be possible, Rode, in a future update? Visual indicator would be really cool on the noise gate settings. Anyway, let's move on and look at DSR. Now, this removes the sibling sounds from your voice. So if you've got any top-end sibilance kind of distortion on your voice, this will help get rid of it. Threshold will leave for the moment. Ratio will leave for the moment. Attack, perfectly fine. And release, perfectly fine. I see there's a second page here. And yes, we've got gain and frequency. Now, frequency is important. You can look at the frequency where your sibilance is occurring in something like the spectral frequency display of Adobe Audition. Find your sibilant range and move that frequency. I know for me, it's a little bit higher usually, up at around seven or 8,000. Then you can go back here increase threshold a little bit more like that and eventually it'll sound like I've got a cold if I keep decreasing it like this so increasing you reduce the effect and then decreasing making it lower like that sounds like I've got a cold it's cutting off everything so um, again set this around minus 35 I would say depending on which frequency you select and again road here with the DSer, it'd be nice to have a little visual display to say the DSer is working and how hard it's working uh, so that would be really cool but that's a basic look at the DSer. And again, if you don't know what you're doing, just leave this as it is. We'll move on to compressor. This has to be my favourite thing, and I think every podcaster's favourite thing, because it makes you sound better. It levels out the loud parts, raises up the quiet parts, and makes your podcast very listenable. Uh, so let's go into compressor. Oh, and this is fantastic. Rode, I can see here there is a visual indicator for the compressor. Two thumbs up from me. Now, if you could do that on the uh, on the noise gate and the de-esser, I'd be super, super happy. Uh, so as you can see here, wow, okay. So we have got... I believe the green is the before, the yellow is the after, so as you can see my voice has got louder running through these settings, and the red is when the compressor is actually kicking in. And it's not really kicking in at the moment, but if I shout, then you see the red is kicking in, showing the compressor is pulling down my voice. Um, so the threshold is pretty good, around minus 19, minus 20 dB is fine. I might just push the ratio up to 3 Again, I want to OCD it. I'd love to have it 3 to 1. 3.1 really plays on my OCD, but never mind. That's probably just me. Um, the attack, yeah, keep that really tight down at 0 0.1. Release, maybe I'll push that up a little bit to a second. Give it a chance to alleviate. Now, as you can see here, it's not kicking in on my voice presently. The compressor is currently doing nothing. Thank you, Rode, for the visual indicator here. I can see that it's not working unless I just get excited and then it, it works. So it's working more as a limiter rather than a compressor for me at the moment. But if I push this threshold down, I'll get that radio sound. Whoa, look at that. And now it's really compressing me. And of course, the more I push the threshold down, the quieter it makes me. Uh, so if I push it right down to minus 40, that's making me much quieter. I need to move up the gain, 4.5 dB, to a little bit higher. And wow, I sound super heavy and processed there. So let's push it back up and pull this back down so we don't go too loud. There we go. Something like that will be... I think these settings are pretty good. The only thing I'd really change or tweak here is push the ratio up maybe to 3 to 1 instead of 2 to 1. Okay, let's get out of the compressor. And finally, it's onto the Aphex effects inside the Rodecaster Pro with firmware version 2.1. Oh, this is so exciting. Big Bottom. This is my favourite effect on the whole Rodecaster Pro, just because of how it's named. Sorry, I'm silly like that. Uh, so tune. Essentially, we're tuning a certain frequency in the voice. Here, it's 100 hertz. Now, 
Bear in mind, if you set your high pass filter at 120 hertz, this is not going to work because you're essentially trying to enhance a frequency that you cut out earlier using high pass filter, okay? Uh, so you need to select the uh, low end that you want to increase. Usually I wouldn't go for 100 hertz. It's too boomy and boxy. I'd probably push it up. How high can this go? 165, that'll do for me drive. Hello, hello, hello. Oh, yes, my bottom's getting bigger. And then the mix. How much do I want to bring this into the mix? So how much do you want to do it? And how much in the mix should it be? And oh, as we go up here, you hear my my big bottom is very big. Uh, anyway, let's move that down. I don't want to sound like a, a radio announcer or voiceover on this particular example. Uh, then we'll go on to oral exciter. Uh, so we're just exciting certain frequencies in the voice. Usually between 3000 and 5000 hertz, your voice sounds really exciting. So those are the nice frequencies you want to enhance. Uh, and again, let's maybe push this up a little bit more so we get those really mid to high end frequencies. And then harmonics, up we go or down we go. And of course, uh, you need to push the mix up to really hear this. Whoa, okay, yeah, I'm getting, yeah, I can hear that as I push that right up. It's a bit sibilant, not too nice. So again, we can scan through the frequency, whoa, like that. And we can go right the way down and sound like her. We're on the telephone, which is really nice. And then all the way back up until we find a nice pleasant frequency in my voice, which is probably going to be uh, around three and a half thousand. Pull the harmonics down, pull the mix down a bit, uh, and then we've got a subtle oral exciter using the Aphex on board and nothing too over the top. So, as you can see here, this is super exciting. I'm so excited for firmware version 2.1 on the Rodecaster Pro. I really hope you are too. I hope you update. If you want some help in the comments, do let me know how you're getting on with this and if you have any questions. And I really look forward to future updates from Rode as they really seem to be nailing it with every update that comes out for the Rodecaster Pro.